49ers this evening Brock Purdy in his career is 4-0 as a starter against Seattle which includes a postseason win it's been a struggle though for the Niners as of late it's a massive game for both teams entering Thursday night we love divisional matchups on Thursday night it really sets the tone for the weekend 49ers tight end you know him you love him George Kittle talked to the media this week about the atmosphere anticipated in Seattle one of my favorite places to play because of their crowd and um, one it's a night game two it's an incredibly loud field three they hate us and so it's extra loud and I absolutely love that it's like the one of the best environments in football specifically for the 49ers Shanahan is trying to get the 49ers back on track good morning everybody and the injury riddled Niners coming off of a massively disappointing loss to the Cardinals in week five Peter Let's go to the NFC West. Let's take it to showdown territory. It's Thursday night. Begin. Yeah, this has become the Niners' second home of late. They have won five straight games over the Seahawks, and they have handled the Seahawks in Seattle the last three years. And you look at this team now, they need to win desperately. Desperately. So George Kittle says this is a great place to play. Yeah. Uh Anywhere would be a great place to play if it ends with a win. If it ends with a loss, the Niners would be 0-3 in the division before even Halloween. A head-scratching loss where they gave a big lead away to the Rams. A head-scratching loss to the Cardinals last week where they gave a big lead away to the Cards. And now they go up to Seattle, a place where they have had a lot of success in recent years. And a team that doesn't have Byron Murphy, their rookie defensive tackle. A team that doesn't have Tariq Woolen. And it doesn't have several other players on defense. This should be a Niners win. And yet... The way they're playing, mm. they don't deserve us to just hand them that W. This is not the Niners of old. Guys, oh, no. this San Francisco 49ers team right now, an offense that has been known to be explosive under Kyle Shanahan, they are last in the league in yards after catch. That's a team that used to go, hey, little little bubble to, yeah. to Debo, little yeah. bubble to, yeah. to McCaffrey, little bubble to IU, go, go. Use check, go. Yeah. They've got nothing after the catch. Purdy is getting beat up back there despite a really good offensive line. And Jordan Mason is really their top offensive player for the 49ers, a guy who you didn't expect to even see much of. They need to win desperately, I think. And I know this sounds like it's 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 me being extreme in the morning. Two and four with an 0 and three record in the division mm -hmm. before Halloween? Mm -hmm. That's not Niners football. That's not Super Bowl contender football. And then you're really digging yourself out of a hole. I'm looking at San Francisco. This has been a place where they've had a lot of success in recent years. Purdy's never lost there. Kittle doesn't lose there too often. Mm. I, I, I think this needs to be a win for San Francisco. Mm. Seattle, get in there. House money, three and two team, a young squad, whatever. San Francisco, $320 million payroll, two and four, 0 and three in the division. No, can't, can't go down like that. Mm. Yeah, Peter, you said that, that number five, that they have five straight wins. The Niners have five straight wins, right? The number five also comes into play with the number of carries that Kenneth Walker had this past week mm. against the Giants. He had only five carries for 19 yards. Ryan Grubb came out this week and said that they need to get him the game. I don't know what's that they need to get him the ball. I don't know what's complicated about this game. Football is a simple game complicated by coaches. <laughs> and you, you, you talk about you, you talk about Kenneth Walker uh, when he went, when 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 they played against the Lions. He had 12 carries for 80 yards and three touchdowns, and then you're going to follow him up with five carries? Like, what are we doing here? So I'm really looking forward to Kenneth Walker getting the carries that he, he needs. If Zach Charbonnet is the guy that's leading your, your backfield, you have, you have a problem. And Geno Smith was your leading rusher last week. And I don't even need to watch the game, but I just got to watch the stats and look at it. And if I see Geno Smith as your leading, leading rusher, I know that it was a bad game for the Seattle Seahawks. So I'm really looking forward to them just getting back to who they are. Kenneth Walker is your bell call. Kenneth Walker is that guy that gets your team going. Now, as far as the San Francisco 49ers are concerned, 10 points. You know, where, you know where that number comes in. They've been leading the past two NFC West opponents by 10 points in the fourth quarter, and they've come to lose those games. So can they finish these games? When they, when they went up against the Rams, they're up by 10 in the, four, in, in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. When they played Arizona, they were up by 10 in the fourth quarter, yet they've mm -hmm. found a way to not produce uh, offensively and not keep points down defensively. So I'm looking forward to them kind of shoring up that fourth, that fourth quarter production. Mm. Yeah, and speaking about fourth quarter production, I think for the 49ers, look, this is a talented team that we were touting earlier in the year. But, like, when you come down to it, like, this is a team that's 2-4 and four for a reason. Like, they've been struggling in the red zone. This is a team that early will put up points, you know, early in the game, 13 points here, 16 points there. But once they get into the red zone, 
They're ranked 29th in in the red zone for touchdown percentage. I mean, th- what are we doing here? Like, you have a Brandon Ayuk who seems like he's back after last week's game. He's, like, playing well. you got Debo Samuel. Of course, you've got George Kittle. And you have, this, you know, the second-leading rushing rusher right now in, in Jordan Mason. Like, we have to do something with that. So, I think it's going to come down to Brock Purdy being able to put that ball in tight windows, really being productive in that space, in that small space in the red zone. But then also, when I think about the, you know, the, their offense, you know, like, can somebody get in their face and get them charged up? Like, I can't, I can't watch another field goal go up when you're down in the red zone. Like, somebody get in their face, yell at them. I want to see that thing that we saw with Bo Nix and, and Sean Payton, like, yelling and fighting. Something has to happen with Brock Purdy and, and that offense in, in the red zone area. But I think that this is a team that is strong enough to, uh, to fight back against the Seattle Seahawks. Mm. No, we'll see. It's time. Seattle, beat this team. Beat the crap out of them. You're playing better than them. You are better than them. You're at home. Do that. The Niners, let's go. Get your act together. Get your bleep together. Oh. It's time. You're two and three. That's fine. Kyle Shanahan's been two and four before, and he's made a title game. He can do it, but he's not doing it right now. And here's what I look at. The Niners are one of our standards. They're the flavor you go to. These are one of our standards of excellence in the league. There are six teams that have made the playoffs each of the last three years. Six teams. Chiefs, Bills, Bucks, Niners, Eagles, Cowboys. All of those teams are at least 500, most of them above it. And then there's these stinky, rotten, two and three, we always blow it late Niners. Let's go. We have so much expectation for this brand and this coach and these players. Debo's back out there. Kittle's back out there. I know injury news. Everybody's got injury stuff, all right? Do you know that the Niners secondary does not have an interception this year? That's not them. They never score at the goal line like we just talked about. And, again, the sky's not falling. The thing's not over. You can get your act together. But it starts tonight. You have beaten better Seattle teams than this. You have been in tougher situations than this. Let's get back to Niner football. And I'll tell you this, folks watching at home, do not turn this game off early. I don't care if the Niners are up 16 to 13 or 40 to nothing. They may blow it. Turn on the game and leave it. Don't go to sleep. Don't flip the channel. Don't start scrolling. Go and find this game late because Kyle Shanahan is really on the edge of the knife right now in terms of legacy, reputation, internet jokes. It's always he blows it late. I can pull up 50 different jokes, Super Bowl jokes, regular season jokes, and you can cure those things. There was a time when Andy Reid was known for poor clock management. That was his legacy. Big Red we see now with all the Super Bowl rings. You would turn on Monday morning, there'd be jokes that Andy Reid doesn't know what time it is. He changed all of that. Kyle Shanahan cannot change that tonight but he can sure go the other way if he's up again on the road and blows it. Don't turn this game off late. The Niners might. But you know what they say? I've said this for years, guys. Football is a simple game complicated <laughs> by coaches. Kyle Shanahan, finish the game. My God, you're better than this. You my know, God. Manta, That's you never, my brother, KB, yeah, yeah. dog. That's what I'm talking about, KB. Let him know. Manta, that quote Come implies on. that you never wanted to become a coach since you think they over- No, I wanted to be right here, guys. After I was, I was like, I'm, I'm going to be yeah. on Jim F.U. with my family. I don't want to be a coach. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Kyle, you, you also mentioned injuries, and, and it just, like, it hits me, like, I get it. When I was talking about the red zone, and, and first off, correction, two and three. I said two and four, two and three. But Christian McCaffrey is the, I mean, is obviously the big miss right here in that production and offense. And we can't, that can't be understated. Like, this is part of the reason why we're seeing this sloppy play, especially in the red zone area. Yeah, I would add this. You know, over the last, you know, five meetings, San Francisco has handled Seattle. Mm-hmm. Seattle's not the same Seattle that they were under Pete in those last few years. They've got this young, new spirit. Now, they've mm-hmm. lost two in a row, but I think tonight's also a national coming out party for the national NFL audience who don't necessarily know Mike McDonald, the new head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. And you mentioned Ryan Grubb, who's now the offensive coordinator. McDonald was the defensive coordinator in Baltimore last year. He gets his job, but was also at the college game at Michigan. Grubb came from the University of Washington. So, it, it's it's the same faces and Geno Smith and DK Metcalf and all this stuff, but like, I think we're gonna see a different Seattle team that's gotten you know the the sand kicked in by them by the by the 49ers over the last five meetings. Yeah, can we focus on Geno Smith for a second? Yeah. I think let's let's just all go around and give like a state of the nation or opinion on on Geno Smith and the start of this Seahawks offense because at times it felt like empty calories with this team. They started out to a three and zero start, but we were. 
weren't really obsessing over their undefeated season at that time because of who they had played and who they had beat. Now they've dropped two games, but Geno Smith is still the statistical king in the league right now. He's leading a ton of categories. Uh, Mike McDonald has called him a bright spot on their football team. Kyle, let me start with you. You look at Geno Smith. You watch him play within the Seahawks offense. Why are we still not hyping up the fact that Geno Smith maybe is at elite play despite losing games? Same reason we didn't throw a parade for the 2-0 Saints. Same reason. We, we've been down this road before, and we like Geno. He is not a world beater, nor is Seattle. And listen, if they lose tonight, then they are the Pacific Northwest Saints, the big start to start the season and then fall on your face a little bit. Don't go three in a losses in a row and lose to the Niners at home. Everybody loves Geno. Nobody loves Geno more than on this show. We've seen a lot of seasons with Geno, and no one was shocked when they lost two in a row after starting 3-0. and Seahawks fans, don't wind us. You probably feel the same way. Who else has a comment on Geno Smith? Who's up? Uh, look, you, you think about you know, all, the, all the stuff that we've been through with Geno. This is his time. He's now the guy, and he's playing well. Playing really well. He's playing real. So it's go out there and win this game. Like, go out there and do this. Geno's looking awesome, and this stage of his career is a good place. Um, but no one's got better wide receivers than that guy, yeah. DK and Lockett, and now, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba, who, by the way, if you didn't see the footage, had one of the best blocking uh, performances. Oh, yeah, yeah, You'll yeah. see it. That's Everyone cool. loves seeing it downfield. <laughs> like, it's a cool opportunity. Like, we didn't talk about the Seahawks, and Jamie, you're right. They were 3-0, and but they had beaten – New England, and they'd beaten Denver, and uh -huh. they'd beaten someone else that you know wasn't you know, worthy of everyone's praise. They lost two in a row. This is a big one for Geno. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, it, it all the starts and begins and ends with with Geno and being able to just stay in the moment. You know, don't don't try to compete about what, what's happening on the other sideline. Just do what you do. Stay within the sticks. Give the ball to Kenneth Walker. I know that's that's probably not Geno. That's Ryan Grubb. They're calling those plays, but. Mm -hmm. Staying within the sticks, giving the ball to DK, let DK do big things with those explosives and, you know, let Jackson Smith and Jigbo yep. be that kind of X factor in the, in the slot and just, just stay within yourself. I think you'll be fine. All right. It's a tasty little West Coast game, divisional matchup yeah. on Thursday night. Tom